Shipbuilding can get kinda crazy and it's so easy to spend ages in it and begin to be like, oh, of course I need a workshop, that can go here. Of course I need an extra living quarters, how else am I gonna fit four missile launchers? And after so many such decisions, you end up with an over-designed hunk of junk that just gets deleted so that you can try again. It's so easy to want to cram everything cool into a single design and well, I've been there many times. Welcome to Fudge Muppet, my name is Scott, and today we're going to take it back to the basics, strip down all the bells and whistles, and play the efficiency game. We are going tiny. We are making small ships, trying to push, or I suppose pull in, the boundaries of shipbuilding. And even if you aren't interested in having a mini ship, the same design principles may inspire other brilliant design decisions in terms of efficiency and appearance. Most of these ship designs use very few habs and are at about or under 20 meters in length and under 20 meters in width, with an exception that is more so tiny on the interior, but we'll get to that. Let's begin. Here are five tiny ship builds that you should try out. Beginning with ship number one, this cute little thing I called Tic Tac. And this was me trying to take the least amount of space possible on a ship without it looking like a hodgepodge of stacked parts. I still, with all these following designs, tried to make it look like an actual ship, something that someone might want to use themselves. Now, this cute little guy has a single one by one hab in addition to the cockpit. We need at least a single hab for the hangar and the docker to link into. And like all these ship builds, it's a B class ship. The C class reactors do take up more space and along with the increased size, they just supply way more power than is needed for these tiny ships. I did however use four ranks of starship design to gain access to all of the parts that I wanted. But many of these same design principles could be applied without starship design using different parts, but also these same principles could be applied to Class A ships. However, of course, the reactor, grav drive, and weapons would have to be different, though they usually occupy a similar space. Though keep in mind that when we are designing such a small ship, we do have to be aware of how many attachments a single piece has. For example, certain grav drives or reactors won't have attachment slots on the back or side, and when we have so few options to place things, we may sometimes need to pick options that aren't the best options, but are more flexible in terms of attachment slots. Anyways, this is Tic Tac. Width is 12 meters, length is 18 meters, and if you want to, for whatever reason, make it super tiny, you can just delete the nose cap and it becomes something like 15 meters. But come on, it looks much better with it on. And we want to make it so ships look good. So this is an asymmetrical design and its port side almost gives the appearance of a shield arm. And also you will find that the shield generator is also attached on the inner side of that arm. So it's like a tiny night ship. The weaponry is also on the smaller arm or wing. It's kind of like a shield and lance situation. You get the idea. I thought this was cool, and if there are any Pokemon fans out there, it's kind of somewhat reminded me of Cloetza, a tiny guy with a big arm. Quick interior tour, this is it. It's a one by one companionway and a cockpit. Let's jump into the actual build. For easy viewing, I split each of the wings and took off the reactor component. Starting with the starboard wing, we have one of the Pinpoint 3G landing gear set to the four variant, and atop this is one of the PB0175 auto helion beams. With so few weapon choices, I thought it was best to go with something that has both hull and shield damage, like a particle beam. Behind this is another of the Pinpoint landing gear set to the mid variant. It could probably be set to the rear variant, but that would make the overall design even longer, and I was trying to make it as small as possible. The other wing begins with a Teo nose cap, which again you can take off if you really need the shorter length, but I felt this brought the whole design together. Behind this is a Teo mid cap, and underneath an Aculander 11 landing gear by Stroud. Next to that is our Stability Pro landing bay, and atop this is another of the Teo mid caps. At the back of this are two White Dwarf 3015 engines. They have the highest top speed in the game, and it made the most sense to me since we have such a small ship that we may as well be getting the most speed out of it. The base speed here is 180 versus the 150 of every other class A engine and the 140 of B class and 130 of C class engines. Of course the downside is that they have less thrust so you can't move as much mass efficiently damaging our mobility but that is not a consideration for our low mass tiny ships. But 
Do note that with the engine system's rank 3 skill, we gain 20% more top speed. And if you have Sam Co on your crew, you will gain a further 30% top speed. I think this can also be achieved with Amelia as well, resulting in a top speed of 280, which is pretty insane. Finally, attached to the Teo mid cap at the front is a 44T Defender Shield Generator. We need this side attached type shield because we simply do not have the room anywhere else. And we couldn't place it on top of the mid caps because A, this compromises the design I felt, and B, it prevents our docker from reaching, and I didn't want a bigger, chunkier docker, as I felt that didn't look quite right. Anyways, that is the port side wing. The midsection is made up of a Teo Samurai cockpit, Again guys, lower level versions look the same and like the engines can just be replaced with lower tier versions while still maintaining the same physical design. Attached to this is the Teo Companionway 1x1 Top B and above this is the Extender Port Docker. Behind this is the Aurora 13G Grav Drive. There are better ones for Class B but this was necessary because unlike some of the other better ones, this has an attachment slot at the back so we can still place a 400G helium tank. But don't worry, we still have a 30 light year jump range. Lastly, we have a 103 DS Mag Inertia Reactor with a Horizon Weapon Mount on the starboard side with the second of the Helion Beams attached. And there you go, a really, really tiny ship that I still think looks good. If you want to just expand it slightly, it's easy enough to bring the cockpit forward and just slot in a two by one hab instead. And do note, being so compact and tiny does only mean we have two weapon slots available, but on to the next one, something with more firepower. This is the Trilobite, and as the name suggests, its silhouette and color scheme is based off the tiny alien creatures you may find of the same name. This particular design is a little more stacked with weaponry, but again, it is small, coming under a 20 meter squared area. I love this little bug ship just weaving through the asteroid fields, but it's also deadly and speedy. First, the interior tour. Again, a single one by Hab connected to the cockpit, tight and snug, cloistered in this exterior shell. Let's get onto the build itself. We split the layers here. It's a very simple two layer construction. The bottom layer beginning from the rear has a 400G helium tank attached to the Aculander 11 landing gear. And at each side next to that is one of the White Dwarf 3015 engines, again, for max speed. Moving forward to the starboard side, we have another of the same Aculander landing gear. In the middle is a one by one Nova companionway. And on the port side is a Stability Pro landing bay by Stroud. At the front are two of the Stroud Cap A's flipped for the underside and nestled between them is a Nova Magellan cockpit. From the top layer, the rear features two more of the Stroud Cap A's, each with PB0100 auto neutron turrets. Cool little additions for some rear facing firepower. In between these, another of the 400G helium tanks attached to the back of a 103DS mag inertial reactor with a Warden SG300 shield generator sitting atop it. An NG2 docker sits in the middle of this layer with Stroud cowling 1LB on either side with an equipment plate and a CE39 missile launcher on top. In front, there are two more of the Stroud Cap A's, each with a PB100 auto neutron beam mounted on top. This can also be a helion beam instead. And between these is a RD3000 beta grav drive with an equipment plate and another of the same missile launchers on top. Snap these layers together and bam, we've got the Trilobite, a tiny ship packing some serious firepower. Now the previous two have been quite flat and compact and perhaps you wanna see a ship design with a little bit more height. This little red rooster might be a good fit for you. It appears a little more conventional, but I gave it the snub nose type cockpit. And yeah, it kind of does remind me a little bit of a chicken, but I'm memeing it a bit here. You can adjust the same design principles and color scheme to give it a more menacing appearance. The interior is again a tiny one by one hab and the cockpit is the small Armstrong type. This is the interior. Short tour again, let's build it. Three-way split, let's look at the underside first. A 120LD landing bay attached to some Teo cowling, flipped for the underside. The main layer features a White Dwarf 3015 engine at the back with a RD3000 beta grav drive. Do note the engine doesn't actually connect to the grav drive because there is no connection point, but instead connects to the engine above, which connects to the ship itself. Either side of the grav drive is one of the 220CB landing gear and another pair of the same landing gear surrounds the Deimos 1x1 companionway in front 
front, which itself attaches to the Armstrong cockpit. We can move all that on top and then for the top layer itself, we have at the back a 3015 White Dwarf engine onto which the other one connects, but this engine connects to the mag inertial reactor, which itself has a Warden SG300 shield generator on top. And either side of this is a M30 Ulysses helium tank. In front is a NG2 docker with two weapon mounts at the side, each equipped with a CE39 missile launcher on the upper end and an auto neutron beam on the bottom ends. Snap on that layer and there you go, a tiny ship, but a little more stacked up. Okay, I kind of cheated on this one. It isn't really a tiny ship in conventional terms of meters squared, but it is skinny and made of tiny interiors. Plus it has to make do with similar limitations, as in there's not a lot of space to attach stuff to. So it was a fun challenge. I just really wanted to demonstrate some of the unique ship designs that are possible. This is an asymmetrical scav ship, trying to emulate the feel of a small star station or satellite somewhat. Let's have a look. It has this smaller section which is dedicated to the landing bay and the docker along with a weapon mount stacked to the brim with weaponry. And this smaller section is connected to the larger rocket section via Hope Tech cross braces. I really love the flexibility afforded by the Hope Tech cross brace habs and the spine brace habs, both of which are easily accessible at Hope Town's Technician, which is on Polvo in the Valo system. Its interior is very simple, basically two one by one Hope Tech habs connected by long hallways, including to the cockpit. This also also is easy to adjust for more habs, which I will show in the build. Speaking of which, let's do that. I can just remove the smallest top layer part and then the rest is all one layer, very easy to see and explain. Starting with the smaller section, we have the Shipbed 200 landing bay. To the port side is a H40 Atlas helium tank. To the other side is a Pinpoint 3G landing gear set to the rear variant. And attached to the front of that is the same landing gear, but the four variant. And mounted atop this is a Firebolt 400 suppressor EM weapon. This section is attached to a one by one on Hope Tech Companion Way with a slim docker on top, so everything enters into this single hab. On the front of this hab is a Nova weapon mount with three PB0174 auto helion beams arranged like so, alongside a CE9 missile launcher on the inner side. Three Hope Tech cross braces attaches this section to the main part of the ship, and atop the closest is the Warden Shield Generator. This cross brace attaches to the one by one companion way right here. At the rear of the main section, we have two of the Pinpoint 3G landing gear that attach to the mag inertial reactor, and the first of the Dun 61 engines sits at the back of this. This ship has a speed of 140 instead of 180 like the others on this list. The other Dun 61 engine is attached to the RD3000 beta grav drive, which is winged by two of the Nova radiators, adding to the satellite star station type look that I was going for. This whole section attaches to the top like so. Along the port side of the ship, we have landing gear all the way to the front where the final one is adjusted for the four variant and it has another of the firebolt em weapons mounted on top along the center of this main section are four deimos spines arranged like so with the front having another em weapon atop it this is geared so that we can use the em weapons constantly but again as is the case with all weapons you can slot them to whatever you like these deimos spines connect to the armstrong cockpit which connects to three hope tech spine habs that lead to the companionway and closing these off are three Teo sidecaps. Now this gives a more satellite type aesthetic. However, fun design aside, practically, I can imagine many of you would want to replace this entire interior bit with actually useful habs. And so that's easy. Just delete the three spine habs and the companion way and you'd have room for two two by one habs that you can make good use of. But with that palette cleanser, let's look at some true tiny ships. This is my favorite of the bunch. This I called the Imperator, the one on the thumbnail, and it's something I would consider for some kind of assassin character. It reminds me of something a Sith Lord might get into, both in color scheme and shape. This is fully specced out for firepower and speed so that no target can outrun you. We have a beefy B-class reactor with 35 base power generated, engines with 180 speed, which reaches 280 speed with engines systems rank three and Samco's 30% speed buff as crew, and we have some shredding weaponry all packed into this tight package that maintains full mobility. The interior is a little bit more spacious with a two by one all in one berth by Deimos, which leads directly into the cockpit. Anyways, this is a terror in the sky, but let's see how it is all put together. 
This is a two layer ship, horizontally cut here for easy understanding of how it goes together. Starting with the bottom layer, we have the ship bed 200 landing bay and either side of it is a white dwarf 3015 engine, both of which are connected to an Aculander 11 landing gear of which there are four that are arranged around the central component of the ship, which is the Deimos 2x1 all-in-one berth, which then connects at the fore to a DS 20.3 Phobos cockpit. Either side of this cockpit connected to the Aculanders are a Deimos hull A, each with an equipment plate and a Hellfire cannon mounted, and an additional of these cannons is mounted on the cockpit itself, and they just shred through an enemy's hull. Of course, you will have had to have progressed to a certain extent within the Vanguard questline to get access to these parts. To the front of the hull pieces are two Deimos braking engines, which can help complete the look. On each side of this layer, we have two of the Deimos wing A's arranged like so to create a sleeker silhouette. And on the underside of these wings facing the front, we have a PB0175 auto helion beam. On the top layer, in the center at the rear, we have the final of the 3015 White Dwarf engines we needed an extra one to maintain 100 mobility. Either side of this is a 500 ton helium tank. In front of this are three Deimos hull A's arranged across the midsection like so. On top of the middle one is the Warden SG300 shield generator and in front of this middle hull piece is the Deimos docker. On the starboard side of this is the Z machine 4000 reactor and on the port side is a RD3000 beta grav drive. A Deimos spine A4 is placed on the top of the grav drive followed by a Deimos Deimos spine B and an additional spine A but reversed at the back on top of the fuel tank. The same combination is placed atop the other side. These I felt just added to the aesthetic flair of the ship. We then have another set of the Deimos wing A's arranged like so with the rear sides featuring PB0 auto neutron turrets and the front sides featuring another pair of the auto helion beams. Both sides of this ship are exactly the same bar the reactor and grav drive. We then just grab the top layer and slide it on top and we're done. A tight and tidy shredder of a ship with top speed and a savagely Sith appearance. I've seen a bunch of you guys ask about prices to make these things, and in the shipbuilder itself, the value seems to be determined by what you could sell it for, so that's not correct. However, in the ship section of your menu, it seems an accurate price is reflected. I'm not sure if a completely one-to-one -one stacks up to the price of all the parts, but I imagine it, it should do so. If not, apologies in advance, but the ships I made today have a total value of 214,400 credits for the Tic Tac, 269,525 credits for the Trilobite, 217,275 credits for the Red Rooster, 367,575 credits for the Scav Ship, and a whopping 368,625 credits for the Imperator, the Sith Lord ship. Bear in mind the more expensive engines, reactors, grav drives, and especially weapons can really rack up the cost, and it's quite possible to make cheaper versions of these designs simply swapping out for the cheaper versions or slightly different versions of weapons and reactors and such while maintaining the same silhouette and overall structure. Of course, any of these designs can be expanded to create larger versions, or in the case of the scav ship, a more dense version. Any of the weapons can also be swapped out for varying results, and remember, each of these ships were class B, meaning that you only need piloting rank 3. However, many of these use Starship Design 4 as well for their parts. Hopefully, these different designs offered something for you to use, or if not copied exactly, then rather inspired different ideas. Remember, these were all done with the limitations of Tiny in mind, offering different examples of ships that have to be efficient with space and using the same principles, practicing making small ships can help your larger ships be far more economical and efficient in design, allowing you more space for aesthetic and structural pieces. Keep this kind of stuff in mind to avoid creating bloated, over-designed messes of ships. Hop down into the comments below and drop any particular requests that you would like to see. I have several ship builds planned and on the way. It is really one of my favorite things to do in Starfield. So subscribe if you haven't already to see the good stuff when it drops. My name is Scott. Thanks so much for watching and I'll be back to nerd out with you again real soon.